Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another episode of the show. I already started the show without starting the show. <laughs> anyway, um, so let's just go right into this. I've got the 2007 Bulletin Place Shiraz. Uh, Shiraz from the Southeastern Australia Appalachian. Um, this is, I uh, bought this for $8.69 from Specs. I had already poured a little bit to do the rinse. That's why I said I was going to head, you know, kind of start the show without starting the show. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about this wine. Let's taste it first, and we'll talk a little bit about the wine. Um, first of all, Shirazes or Syrahs are, are one of my, uh, I guess, top top five varietals that I do like. Uh, if you've watched the show a lot, you know I do have a, a tendency to like this uh, particular grape along with um, uh, Zinfandels. And, of course, Cabernet Francs, I'm always like, oh, Cabernet Franc and peppers. But um, this is definitely one of my, one of the first types of wines, uh, varietals, that I gravitated towards when I was really just kind of like getting into wine. So off, off the nose, a little smoke. A little bit of wood, some spice, maybe some red fruit, but is that, to me it's not very fruit forward on the nose. It's more, a little bit of earthiness and more spice on the nose rather than like fruits, which you think, you know, Australian reds are fruit bombs, so. So we'll see, we'll see how it tastes. There's the fruit. All right, so. A little jammy, um, light, uh, somewhat light in body. Uh, the, the tannins aren't very heavy, fairly light tannins. Um, it's got a nice juiciness to it uh, with, with, with the fruit. Uh, I'm going to go, actually, I'm going to go a little bit strawberry, kind of. Um, strawberry a little bit. And the hints of chocolate. Um, get a little bit of wood. A little bit of wood, not a whole heck of a lot, um, but just kind of jammy. I think it's good. I liked it. I like the style. Um, I do like this, you know, the, the Australian Shiraz style. Um, this is pretty much what an Australian Shiraz is thought of. Um, I don't want to say should be because, you know, the winemaker decides what they want their wine to be, but it, it's... It's something that you would go, yes, this is an Australian Shiraz if you were drinking it. Um, I like it. Um, I like it. I actually like it kind of the best of all the wines I've tasted today uh, as far as flavor profile. Um, and, and sometimes, you know, I don't really talk about that, but a lot, a lot of times when I arrange my wines, that's almost kind of funny. These almost went in. Oh, my goodness. That is too funny. No, I didn't do it that way. I, I arranged them that way. Um, just to show you what I was looking at. These are all the wines off to the side. 
Now, when I did it to the side, I wasn't really paying attention, but I did this as I was putting them together. And then I looked at this one, I'm like, really? Pretty much highest to shortest, tallest to shortest, but that's not the order I did them in. Um, also, going from this direction and how the how the little pad was, it made them it made the heights a little bit different. But anyway, um, I do tend to consciously or subconsciously, I'll put wines in a certain order of what I think I'm going to like better or not, um, or I will sometimes try to go lighter to fuller because as you're as you're tasting wines, you don't want to have the big, 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 bold wines first, and then you're trying to drink, like say, the delicate white wines at, at the end, um, because things don't don't uh, taste as as good or as uh, sometimes your taste buds don't react the same way. I mean, it's only five wines. It's not like my palate's destroyed from from two wines, but I do tend to put them in an order sometimes like that. Uh, sometimes I just pop and pour. I don't really care what order it is. Anyway, so as far as a wine, enough of that rambling. I think it's a well-made wine. Um, I think it's it's a it's I think it's the best of the five. Uh, that doesn't mean I'm going to give it a 90 or a 95. Uh, a good solid 87. Um, and really, what is what is another point? But uh, I like it, and uh, for nine dollars or less, uh, it's definitely a good buy. I think you should if you see it, uh, check it out. Now, uh, something about this wine or about this company, it's the Evans Wine Company. And uh, as uh, I had to remind myself, because I never finished the Australia part of sommelier school, and by the way, yes, I will be resuming that, but I'm just going to start with the next level. I, apologies to Australia, but I'm just going to start with the next level with where I'm going to start with Bordeaux again and go more in depth. We'll get back to Australia more in depth. Um, so uh, anyway, um, Lynn Evans... Uh, is kind of considered like as the grandfather of uh, the godfather or whatever of, of Australian wines. Um, he uh, was one of the people that really got Australian wines kind of modern, current Australian wines put on the map. Uh, this is his company. He, he uh, passed away, I think, in 2006, if I remember the biography correctly. Um, but uh, uh, this is one of the wines from his company. Uh, he also was he was instrumental in a lot of things with Australian wines. With uh, uh, he also happened to be, and I, I should have kept the Wikipedia page up. Um, he also happened to have uh, uh, been somebody who also um, worked with uh, somebody that I never knew because uh, it's a little bit predates me. But um, I'm trying to I'm just trying to stall a little bit. But a gentleman by the name of Graham Kerr. Now, uh, if you know who that is, awesome. Because if you said his name to me two hours ago, who Graham Kerr was, I'd be like, I don't know. Uh, the Galloping Gourmet. Now, the two of them were the original Galloping Gourmets. They worked together. And then, um, uh, what it was, the Key and uh, Kerr co-authored a book called The Galloping Gourmets. The two got their nick named from a 35-day worldwide trek to the finest restaurants around the globe. Um, and then the persona became more associated with Kerr, and then he created the cooking show. Um, so anyway, let's see. Uh, 2006, I was right. Anyway, um, he's, he's basically the, the person that really got... Um, that really got Australian wine off, you know, off and running. Uh, it also mentioned that he transformed the blind tasting of wine into a competition sport through his creating and developing the options game in which competitors attempt to uh, identify wines. Anyway, uh, so he's he's one of those guys you should know who he is if the name pops up and you're into wine. Um, it's a really good wine. I do like it. Eighty seven, yeah, eighty seven. And uh, if you find it, buy it. I'll have a link below to the uh, to the wine company, to the winery. And um, as always, come by, friend me up, leave comments, and uh, donate. And that's it. We'll see everyone again next time.